Last week, Eros uh, International Media got downgraded to default by rating agency Care. Uh, to, to discuss this downgrade and to look, uh, give us more clarity, we have Mr. Kishore Lula, Group Chairman and CEO of Eros International, uh, joining us. Uh, Mr. Lula, thank you very much for joining us from Bloomberg Quint. Uh, can you take us through, uh, you know, I just saw a morning release from your end saying that you're coming out with a share uh, repurchase program. Uh, can you take us through what is the program about and how, how, how is it going to play out? Yeah, you see, that's uh, the repurchase share program which you saw the announcement is at the PLC level at the New York Stock Exchange. Um, and the promoter, Eros PLC, which owns the majority of Eros India, has creeped in the shares in the last quarter also, will keep on doing so uh, for the Indian company in mm. any event. Okay, you know, my question was that, you know, we saw a sudden erosion on share value of, for the Indian shareholders there. Uh, why didn't you come out with a buyback program for the Eros India? Uh, no, you see, what we have done, we have bought the shares. Eros PLC has bought shares of Eros India in the last quarter, if you see the filings. Mm. How much uh, have you bought in? If you can give us some numbers or idea. About two up to up to two percent of the company. Okay, and you, you plan to continue buying those shares in the market? To yes, we continue. We plan to continue buying the yeah, shares. Let me come to the care downgrade uh, that happened. Uh, you know, it was uh, the case downgrade was for a small amount of a million or two million dollars uh, why did the uh, I means why why couldn't the company pay off uh, the principal and interest uh, to banks uh, it was uh, you know some misfortunate error now that has been rectified uh, and we will take up with care now so that we can get our ratings reinstated in the coming weeks uh, you know I, uh, and I, if you look at the yeah. company yeah we have uh, reduced our debt in the last one year of 100 crores mm. and there are no uh, debt maturities in this year except some term loan installments about 50 crores so and the cash flow of the company from there we can easily sustain you know uh, that's what is surprising because you know care in its rating reports very clearly stated that there's a slowdown in collection of uh, money from debtors and also uh, you know they uh, and this has been confirmed by the company and the banks uh, from where they have taken a default if any not, uh, statement uh, also they have gone ahead and said there is a cash flow issue for, with uh, as far as eros international media is concerned see there are you know temporary cash flow issues sometimes from the delay but there is no alarming situation as such uh, we have as we said in the last one year reduced the debt by 100 crores and there are no significant debt maturities. The point to note is there are no significant debt maturities in the company, except the term home installments, which will be this year, uh, which we are fully confident to service and companies in a very good health. Uh, no, I'm a little surprised when you say there are temporary cash flow issues because uh, as far as uh, the disclosures made by the company is concerned, you're sitting on 141 crores of cash and cash equivalents. So, you know, a payment of $2 million would have been easily paid. Uh, and if you're saying that you had a temporary cash flow, then that's a surprising thing because of the cash you're sitting on. No, cash has been sitting on in the subsidiaries, and if we bring those cash in from the subsidiaries, there are dividend tax uh, involved, and that's the reason we didn't had those, uh, and the other cash which is sitting, it's in the cash equivalents with the banks only. Hmm. So this is from the cash flow from the operations. We had some slowdown, but that's picking up. That's normal course of business, sometimes the slowdown happens. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, when I look at your balance sheet, I see that there is a receivable of nearly 800 crores which is coming in at the end of March uh, 2019. What is the reason for this high uh, and increasing receivables? No, receivables, you know, from the catalog syndication, we give the DSO days credit of anywhere from 250 to 300 days to the customers mm -hmm. uh, because of the catalog revenue. And that is the normal course of business whereby there are certain, so say, suppose the theatrical cycle is anywhere up to 90 days. Uh, the catalog syndication, the cycle is anywhere from 250 to 360 days. Is there a, is, are there plans to bring down uh, this cycle? Because yes. the DSO days there are almost, full, uh, almost uh, like a year. Yeah, see, uh, this uh, there is a full plan that to bring the receivable days down, and I think we will achieve 200 to 220 DSO days in this year. 
Okay. Uh, you know, another issue which uh, which, uh, uh, which I saw was uh, there's a content advances which have been growing for you uh, in uh, as far as Indian companies concerned. Uh, at the end of March, uh, I think it was somewhere around 1,600 uh, crores, 1,583 crores. Uh, what is the plan with this content uh, advances? When do you uh, plan to realize them and convert them into revenues? Because these are something, I think, cash which yeah. is stuck there. You see, the content advances are the various films and the digital films and the production and the programs. And as soon as they will get, keep on get ready, so that will have... Uh, you know, we are selling overseas and the digital rights to the parent and then the realizing it through satellite and the Indian theatrical in India. Mm. So that will, in the next 18 months, you will see that all this content will be ready and that will be realized, that will turn into the cash flow for the company. Mm -hmm. uh, can you give us a, uh, you know, little bit of information about how much of receivables uh, is there from the parent and uh, uh, with respect to the content which has been sold to them? Yeah. See, uh, there is, uh, you, you can look at the disclosures of the company. The parent also gives advances. And if you look at the percentage in the relationship agreement between Eros PLC and Eros India, mm. uh, whereby we sell the rights uh, to the parent mm. for the international and the global digital rights, yeah. plus at a 30% markup. So what is the receivable amount of the 800 odd crores which is there? Uh, how much does the parent owe the Indian arm? No, parent doesn't owe. These are the receivables from the third parties. From the third party. Mm -hmm. And is there any receivables from uh, any uh, related party which is also there? Sorry? Is there any receivables which is uh, which is there from related party entities as well? Or no, 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 no. Okay, because uh, there was, uh, you know, there was a report that came out uh, over the weekend uh, from one of the research agencies, and they had questioned uh, the uh, related party transactions uh, as well as uh, the amount yeah. of receivables which is coming, uh, which is growing for you. No, I'll, I want to clarify here. You see, if you look at the report which this Hindenburg research has come out with. Uh, we had a class action lawsuit in 2016-17 in the New York, uh, along with these allegations. Mm -hmm. So in fact, company defended and won the class action lawsuit that the proper disclosures have been made. Then these shots actually uh, filed the case against in the appeal court. And we won the case in appeal court also with prejudice, whereby judge was annoyed saying that why, you know, you're bringing in these fictitious cases against mm. Eros, whereby mm. properly disclosures, disclosures and discharge uh, has been done on the balance sheet. Mm. We had audit committee review. Audit committee had appointed Skadden, Ops, one of the biggest law firms, and the top five accountant firms to go through all the disclosures which have been done properly and the proper corporate governance has been followed. And we had no changes in our disclosures. Hmm. Uh, and so the corporate governance we are following properly. Hmm. You know, given the uh, fact that you have nearly 250, 270 days of receivables, which is, uh, or uh, DSO days, which is there, uh, and uh, high receivables, is there a need for the Indian uh, arm to raise funds from the market? I'm asking this because you have a no. high short term uh, debt, which is there. No, you see, if you look at, we have reduced the debt only in the last one year. Uh, we will realize these um, debtors and cash flow of the company. Mm -hmm. And whereby, you know, as I said, there are no big debt maturities this year. Mm -hmm. So we are in a good shape to service those. Hmm. Because you know, uh, the reason I'm asking is that if you, if someone look, goes through your presentation, it very clearly says that nearly 60 percent or 59 percent comes from television. Uh, theoreticals only uh, comes in for nearly 30 odd per percent, and uh, and you have a big uh, you know exposure to TV, and that's the reason why there is a DSO days are also very high. So, is that a, 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 what are you doing to bring down that uh, DSO days and and hence receivables and bring more cash flow into the company yeah see we are just uh, collecting more and i think uh, in that way the clients are also playing and as we said we didn't have a single bad debt into our books all these uh, collections are collectible mm -hmm. and that is supporting the cash flow of the company mm -hmm. uh, and you know finally uh, uh, have you paid off uh, the care uh, 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 
the money which uh, the interest and pay, uh, principal payment which was which you were supposed to pay to the banks have you paid off that amount yes sorry uh, the interest and uh, principal which we were supposed to pay to the bank and that and which got yes. delayed or defaulted uh, did you pay that amount back to the bank yes we have already you know remitted we have already instructed our banks to be paid Hmm. Uh, over the next one or two months, what is the amount of uh, uh, you know uh, debt payments, if any, it's coming uh, f for uh, you know either renewal or for payment? Any? Uh, can you give us a no timeline? total debt? Uh, you know term loan payments this year would be around forty to fifty crores. And uh, and uh, and the debt payment which you defaulted was a short term debt payment or is was the long term one? No, that was only some interest payments. Interest payments, which is there. Okay, sir. Uh, you know, you since you're here, I just and wanted to. And there's no default on any debt at the moment. Okay. Since you're here, I also wanted to ch uh, check with you on Eros now. Uh, your release said that you have nearly 18.8 million of paid customers. Uh, can you give us an idea of yeah. what is a, a monthly average user uh, number or a daily average user number? See, uh, these are 18.8 million paying subs. So, if you look at the business model of Eros now. Uh, we have B2, B2C, which is the subscribers to the telcos and the other partnership, and B2C, and international. Uh, so whatever we, and say, suppose we enter into agreement with the telcos or with, uh, you know, any DTH operators or anything that's B2, B2C, mm -hmm. whereby we have minimum guarantees or we have certain revenue share arrangements with these, uh, you know, operators, and internationally, also, we have got some similar arrangements. We are present in 109 countries. You must have seen that we did yeah. a, uh, Apple TV tie-up also, whereby Apple is launching Eros now. We are also present on Amazon channels in UK and US, and also on various major operators across the globe. Okay, but can you, can you give us a sense of the kind of revenue that uh, Eros now would be generating now that it's almost a year now? Yeah, so this year we are targeting revenues of anywhere in excess of between 75 to 100 million dollars. Uh, from Eros now, that is FY 1920? Yes. And uh, that would be a profitable operation or uh, on an operating basis you will yes, be profitable? Yes, already profitable. No, already profitable. And uh, how much of content uh, cost would go into that? Uh, you already have some amount which we have already given as advances, but uh, uh, what is the amount yes, of content so all cost? All the advances we have given, you know, a lot of advances will get converted into originals and the movies for uh, Eros now also. And um, we are making some good product. Have you, you've seen the service. We own about 12,000 films already. Hmm. So we don't have to pay for that. Hmm. And that's the largest uh, digital content available online, which is hmm. on Eros now. Hmm. So you're saying that aside of the investments which you already made, uh, you don't have uh, any future investments coming in uh, into it? Because uh, I think there's a pipeline for FI20 which is there, but for 21, 22, uh, is there additional amount which you planning to put in for content? You see, it is very, you know, we can plan the content capex depending upon our cash flow. Hmm. So it's not that, you know, we have to freeze our capex now and then, you know, depend whether we'll be capex short or not. Hmm. So I think we're in this good position whereby we can plan, cut back or increase depending upon the cash flow of the company. Mm -hmm. And you also have a JV with the Reliance 50-50 uh, uh, JV for content. Uh, uh, where are we on that? Uh, what That's kind of content right. uh, we are uh, producing for that? Yeah, we have. Uh, we are going to do some projects together. I think that's under progress. Okay, and uh, don't have any details of that as of yet. No, as of now, we don't have. And appropriate, we'll uh, release it to the market. Okay. Uh, final question, sir. Uh, the whole issue about cash flows. Uh, uh, when do you see operational cash flow positive coming in for Eros uh, International and Eros International India? Uh, this year, we're looking at. Uh, you know, the so next three years, actually, you know, if you look at the CAPEX plan is about 750 million and the cash flow plan is about 900 million for the group for three year period. Mm. So at the group level, uh, our EBITDA, at the, if you look at till December numbers, the trailing EBITDA is 100 million and a net debt of about 155 million. And we released the net debt today is about 145 million of a EBITDA of more than 100 million. So the net debt leverage is not that high. Yeah, but when do when do we uh, when when does Eros become cash flow positive from an operational point of view? Because uh, for the last many years, operationally, uh, you are cash flow negative. 
No, some years have been cash flow positive, some years has been negative. Now, as long as, you know, how the growth of the subscribers of Eros now is coming, that will help the bottom line of the company. And that's where we'll become cash flow positive when the digital subscribers are growing. And you've seen that 18.8 million now. Uh, two and a half years ago, we were at 2 million subscribers only. Uh, two years ago, if you look at the EBITDA of the company was 54 million. Now it is nearly doubled. Uh, so in that way, we are in that great situation whereby we can cut back on capex and decide on our depending upon the cash flow on the growth of the company um, and we don't have that much leverage on the company hmm. uh, mr lula thank you very much for joining us and uh, clarifying thank uh, you uh, clarifying all, all the issues. Thank, you. thank you thank you thank you thanks bye that was kishore lula group's chairman and ceo of eros international plc thank you